I mean, all the evidence is that European aid to Ukraine is not sustainable um, at anything like the level so far. And while European aid has not been critical in military terms, it has been absolutely critical to propping up the Ukrainian economy and the civilian budget. Uh, and of course, you know, that is also essential to the war effort. This raises the possibility, which, well, well, heightens the possibility, which had been raised over the last couple of months, I'd say, of Russia not just continuing to gain ground in the Donbass and maybe finally securing complete control of the two provinces that kind of started this whole thing in a, in a certain sense, at least Russia's initial claim was about uh, Donetsk and Luhansk the, uh, in the Donbass. Um, but in addition, the possibility that there could be such a breach of Ukrainian lines, right, that um, you would have something almost catastrophic with, with Russia readily coming into uh, control of almost everything on that side of the Dnieper River, perhaps, and and making uh, big gains in the south. There are two other provinces that Russia all also now says it is annexed. Um, and um, and and the, and the thing that came through in your responsible statecraft piece was that uh, if that happens, there will be calls for well, uh, for starters, for for direct NATO intervention, uh, presumably from some corners. Uh, that would be a major escalation. There will be intensified calls. Uh, for letting Ukraine use the newly supplied F-16s to strike deep into Russian territory and in other use other weapons strike deep into Russian territory, which could be um, escalatory, I guess. So uh, th that that has a kind of a, a kind of unfortunate potential. I hadn't really thought about before now, but for starters, how likely is it that there will be such a breach that uh, you know Russia will? Uh, there will just be some kind of breakthrough that gives Rus Russia huge new momentum. I mean, I know you're not a military guy fundamentally, but you talk to them. Yeah, and I, mean, I studied military history. I used to be a war correspondent. Okay. Uh, but that said, uh, you know, one can't say. I mean, it's, it's speculation. Um, in the short term, I mean, as is now very clear, uh, Contemporary military technology, as during the First World War, strongly favours the defensive. Uh, you know, both sides have, since 2022, progressed only in very small incremental ways. But, I mean, if you look at the First World War, where that was also true, you know, on the Western Front and the Italian Front uh, for years, but, you know, in the end, one side or the other cracked. Uh, because of the sheer weight of numbers, of artillery, of munitions, economic strength. Um, and that, of course, raises the question of how, just how long Russia is prepared to go on hammering away. And there, I mean, once again, this is speculation. So far, the Russian economy has performed far better than the West expected or hoped. Uh, but the Russian Central Bank itself has warned of serious problems next year with inflation, labor shortages, uh, the economy overheating. Um, if uh, the, the, the other point, of course, is that if Russia can keep this up for another two years, well, obviously you have to look at the US elections, but we don't know the results or what will come of that. But in Europe, the German government uh, has just cut its direct aid to Ukraine uh, by almost 50% and has announced that in 2027, it will go down by more than 90% its aid. The French finance minister has talked, uh, uh, made a statement this week about intense budgetary pressure in France. Uh, the British government is facing... Uh, I mean, a, a very, very difficult choice between its promises to restore the National Health Service, um, to retool the economy, uh, 
a lot for alternative energy as part of the battle against climate change, and on the other hand, promises vastly to increase military spending. Uh, and you know, in the end, the money is just not there. And and of course, you're facing a situation in all countries where, in part, in reaction against support for Ukraine, you have a surge of support for populist and anti-war parties, mm. uh, often from the extreme right, as in France and Germany. So, I mean, all the evidence is that European aid to Ukraine is not sustainable um, at anything like the level so far. And while European aid has not been critical in military terms, it has been absolutely critical to propping up the Ukrainian economy and the civilian budget. Uh, and of course, you know, that is also essential to the war effort. So, you know, Zelensky, uh, it's a pretty big problem for him that he doesn't know who's going to win the U.S. presidential election, right? Presumably, if he knew who the president was going to be, he would tailor whatever pitch he's going to make when he comes here to that person. Um, do you have any sense for, you know, I, we're reading about this. He's going to come present some new victory plan. I mean, it, uh, I don't see how that could mean actually expelling Russian troops from Ukraine at this point, unless he's he's lost his mind. Um, do you have any sense for what kind of thing he's going to propose and how he is going to split that difference, not knowing where the pres uh, president is going to be, Harris or Trump? Not really. I mean, he's going to talk to um, Trump, uh, the Trump and the Harris team. Uh, mm -hmm. He said, um, and uh, I, I, you know, I, I really do not know in detail. It may be that the Ukrainians themselves have not yet worked out in detail, um, really in detail, what they're going to say. Um, but he will obviously emphasize Ukraine's determination to go and willingness to go on fighting, and the impossibility of meeting certain conditions. Um, there is no chance of Ukraine formally su surrendering any territory or giving up or meeting Putin's demand um, and giving up um, more territory in the uh, provinces Russia says it's annexed, but Russia has not yet occupied. Um, but uh, I think that he will also emphasize Ukraine's willing uh, readiness for talks, uh, because obviously he will want to deflect Western charges that the Ukrainian government is committed basically to an, an, a, an impossible program for the indefinite future, uh, because it's clear that both in the elites and populations, uh, there is less and less belief in this in the West. Um, so there is continued support for Ukraine, but there is, you know, also a, uh, a, a desire that Ukraine come up, you know, with some sort of realistic plan, mm -hmm. not for a settlement now, but for, you know, something that the Russians could begin to look at. Um, my sense is, however, that Kiev yeah, is still a long way away from that.